always wanted to be my dad. What if that happens? What if I become him and I don't even know him? You're not your dad, Mark. We all know that. You're not him. You weren't there. Yeah, so this is actually starting to get pretty interesting. Let me pick your brain and let's think on this for a moment. Because I don't know if comic book adaptations of shows like The Boys and Gen V, or say movies like The Batman or say the upcoming release of Deadpool and Wolverine, are superhero productions that we didn't know we wanted but needed as an audience, or was this always just going to be the natural progression of a genre and media that has been increasing more and more in popularity by older people over the past decade and a half? Whatever the answer is, because I honestly couldn't tell you, and it seems like the titan that was the MCU and the duck that is Bob Iger is even more clueless than I am, but it's relatively obvious that the subgenre of the more adult-themed superhero comic book adaptations are really keeping the entirety of the genre above water. Which isn't to discredit any of the TV shows or movies I just mentioned, because as we all know, Invincible Season 2 just ended, and while you might have heard around the grapevine some pretty L takes like the show has fallen off due to the mid-season break back in late 2023, that couldn't be farther from the truth, because I'm not gonna lie, no exaggeration, we might have one of the best pieces of media when it comes to the superhero genre as a whole. And from what I've heard and from what I now plan to read in the future, it seems like this is all just massive setups for even more massive and satisfying payoffs. So with that being said, it's pretty easy for me to say that Invincible Season 2 is pretty incredible and almost a flawless piece of entertainment, and what I would definitely consider in my opinion to be an almost completely character-driven story, and a show that was obviously written, cared for, and nurtured by people that actually give a shit, Meaning what you get here as an audience member is masterfully written and detailed characters, immersive and barbaric action sequences, a plot that doesn't seem like it was AI generated or written by a team of people with the combined IQ of a wet sponge, nuanced and intellectual dialogue sequences that not only build character relationships and dynamics, but also pushes the plot forward in a natural and organic way. Foreshadowings and setups that actually ask the audience to engage in the media, instead of just assuming that the entire audience has the attention span of your average TikToker. Oh, did I also mention that the characters are some of the most developed and interesting characters we have in the genre right now? Because I definitely think I forgot to mention that. But that's enough glazing for now. Let's talk. Uh, this is actually kind of funny because I feel like I haven't written one of these in quite a while. I mean, I've been reviewing Pooh on a screen like Madam Web, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and Godzilla X Kong. Actually, no, that's actually not poop on a screen. There's just truly not a plot in that movie. But when it comes to Invincible Season 2, to I guess try to sum it up in a more linear format, seeing how I'm just now realizing how detailed and convoluted the plot could also be when you're just explaining it to random people or your mates. But at the same time, it still furthers and solidifies my earlier point in saying that Invincible is definitely more of a character-driven show. In general, following the events of Season 1 and specifically the battle between Mark and Omni-Man, Mark not only faces his typical external threats when it comes to being a superhero, but struggles internally not only to find a balance between his two lives with him and his girlfriend Amber entering college together, but what some would call his destiny of eventually becoming his father and following in the footsteps of the Viltrum Empire. A true, worst case, and unfortunately, majority of the case scenario when it comes to Mark. Remember when Doctor Strange said that it was a 1 in 14 million chance that we actually win against Thanos? Yeah, Mark is like the anti-Thanos, with it pretty much sounding like this one Mark in our universe is the non-genocidal Mark. But that could also be due to, say, other characters and loved ones in our Mark story. But more on that later. With other subplots going on like Eve still coming to terms with what kind of superhero she wants to be, Amber and Mark's relationship, which actually isn't bad now because Amber isn't written like a total headass, the Guardians of the Globe and their continuing interpersonal relationships, the immortal having a philosophical meltdown from him, you know, being immortal, Donald struggling with his reality and what it means to be human, 
Debbie facing the hardships of being a single mother and technically being a widow, kind of, Alvin creating stronger ties with the Coalition to rebel against the Viltrumites, Cecil is still just being a dick, and I still haven't even touched on the masterclass writing and character development and growth that is Omni-Man. Mwah! Chef's kiss. I feel like I've mentioned it before, but definitely not nearly as often as I yap about some of my other minuscule personal opinions, but a character-driven piece of media is really the way most studios should be looking at and full sending on. For movies or TV shows, generally speaking, it feels like no matter how good or engaging the plot might be, how immersive or grand the set pieces could get, or even how expansive the lore or world building could become, it truly feels like an empty shell with no substance without engaging, relatable, or simply interesting characters that the audience can latch onto. Rather, that's for negative or positive reasons is redundant because it's up for the audience to decide. And while yes, there are definitely some outliers out there that find success focusing on other aspects when it comes to cinema or TV making, like say the Avatar franchise mostly focusing on their mind-shattering and realistic visuals, or even more recently with the MonsterVerse movies. But even in that instance, Warner Brothers knew that they had to give at least one of our main titans a semblance of a character and character motivations. My point is, is that a show like Invincible doesn't work nearly as well, or honestly I would say is a story that wouldn't work at all, without the character of Mark, which seems rather obvious seeing how he's the main character of the story, but take the time to think about it and take a look within yourself and you'll realize that in the majority of stories, TV or movie, that's rarely the case when the main lead is the main reason your show or movie works. Easily one of the most grounded and relatable characters put to screen when it comes to the superhero genre, you're truly invested into Mark's journey, emotions, motivations, and character decisions throughout the entirety of the runtime, really rooting for his character because he's genuinely a good person thrown into the wrong situation. But in a way, Mark is written in a way where it seems like he is that one person that can even shoulder this immense of a destiny. A true lose-lose deck of cards, and it's painful and gut-wrenching to watch as the deck of cards that he's been forced to play continue to bite him, his family, and close ones right in the ass. But again, at the same time, it's that family and those close friends that make our Mark our Mark. Masterclass writing. Of course it goes without mentioning that the action set pieces were fantastically choreographed, all while continuing the ridiculous, gruesome, and realistic gore that the show has been known for. And the plot as a whole continues to progress in a natural and organic way as I mentioned before, slowly building up the setup and filling in the cracks in the pavement in order to ensure an epic payoff. But I also have not read the source material, so honestly I'll leave that for you guys in the comments, because I can only say that from an only show watcher's point of view. Overall, I feel morally obligated to recommend this show to everyone and anyone who hasn't seen it, and I completely dismiss the notion that the show fell off after its mid-season break. Now don't get me wrong, as someone who just watched the entirety of the show after the mid-season break, maybe I just don't have all the context. But that's not the point. The point is, is that Invincible Season 2 is an incredibly character-driven story with masterfully written and detailed characters, spectacular action sequences, an engaging plot, intellectual dialogue choices, foreshadowings and setups that actually pay off in a satisfying way, and a show that was obviously written and cared for by people that give a shit and know what they're doing and know what they're asking their audience to digest. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new, or not even relatively new, this is a new grading tier list being added to the end of every one of my videos, or I guess I should say every one of my reviews on my channel. We started this in 2024, and honestly, I would say it's been going pretty solid so far. I would say go watch some of those reviews, even though you're just going to see where I put them on the tier list here, but I mean, you could still definitely go do your boy a solid. Still, I think, actually no, I know that I can comfortably say that Invincible Season 2 is cinema in TV form. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter, I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. 
Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.